Live from Los Angeles, welcome to Good Morning La La Land. I'm Dr. Aaron. Hi, I'm Rob Mack. And I'm Jessa Moyer. This is Good Morning La La Land, America's first live streaming daily talk show coming to you Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Now also available on Apple TV and Roku. It's going to be a Good Morning La La Land. Right. Transformation Tuesday. We always talk about body, mind, spirit transformation. And we're so honored to have an icon in the house from The Secret, amazing human being, and OC's housewife. We got some big people here today. So excited. Already a great day. Uh-huh. That's right. Absolutely. A master in beauty from the inside and out. I'm so excited to welcome to the show Lizzie Rothschild. Good morning, Liz. She walked in here. She's such a light. I'm so excited to talk to you. She is a TV personality. She's the CEO of Sunkin and a mother. You make it look so good. She does. <laughs> and so easy. And of course, James <laughs> Arthur Ray. It is incredible to be in your presence today. I'm so looking forward to having a conversation Thank you. It's with good you. to be here. You know, Love having you. Yeah. Here on Good Morning La, La Land, we like to know, what is your morning routine like? How do you start your day? James, I'm, I'm very curious. I'd love to start with you. Well, my, my day starts at 4 a.m. every single day. And the first thing I do is begin controlling my mind because the mind is like a little puppy if it's not rained backwards. And so I want to start pointing it in the right direction right away. And so I practice what I call proclamations, which is saying things out loud that I want to put into my unconscious. Wow. Uh, the now, I have a question. Do you write your own proclamations or is that something you source from other inspiration? I write my own. And part of that includes my purpose statement as well as my vision and the many things that I want to do and impact in the world, as well as how I know this universe works. And so I'm constantly, you know, programming, if you will, or self-suggesting those things into my unconscious. Somebody get me a pen. I need to write the proclamation <laughs> right away. <laughs> Take notes. I, I, I missed the question. Everyone was laughing. What was the question? Uh, the, the, I just said I need a pen so I can write my proclamation down right now. I'm taking notes from you today, oh, James. Oh, good. Well, he's got like 3,000 books, so you can just pick up any of those. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather talk to that handsome man myself. Lizzie, what's your morning routine like? How do you start your day? Oh, well, if I don't have two pairs of eyes staring at me, like right when I wake up in the morning, I have two little boys, and sometimes they wake me up before I normally get up. But I like to get up around, you know, five or six. If I have the ability, I like to work out first thing. I love to work out at five, six a.m. I do Orange Theory. I work out with my trainer. I'm really getting into Pilates, and I just feel like when I work out first thing, my mind just gets going for the day, and I get excited, and I start, you know, building up like, you know, what I'm going to do all day, and it gives me energy too, which. You know, you really need, especially if you're running around with little boys. You know, I have a house of little boys. Oh. So, um, but you know, you know, I work out, and then I'm with my kids. You know, you know, feeding them, fighting with them to brush their teeth, getting them dressed, <laughs> or whatever. You know, summer school, play dates, regular school, and it's summertime right now. So these days are long. And <laughs> They're fun, but well, they're, you, you know, know, they're long, and I'm I, home with them every I day. I happen to know somebody who is the CEO of a very cool swimmer line. I don't know if you've met her, but, <laughs> uh, you oh. know, Sun Kitten, so. <laughs> well, we're so excited to have you both here today and be a part of Good Morning All End. We're looking forward to talking to you more yeah, later in the for show. Sure. So exciting, you guys. This is a transformation. I always, when one of the biggest transformations of my life was watching The Secret. You know, I was into obviously spirituality and I'd been meditating for years before the secret came along but that was like a huge shift in the awakening of all the all the you know universal law stuff and everything for the world I mean obviously there's a truth that forever have been around but want to dive into that for sure but before oh absolutely we get there, yeah. I love the secret I remember what the first thing I ever remember reading that truly changed my life was um, conversations with God by Neil Donald Walsh mm -hmm. um, but when I watched the secret it made it all accessible Right? Totally it was finally right. accessible in a way that I could properly digest, so mm -hmm. can't wait to talk more about that. Right. Yeah. I have yet to read The Secret, but I'm just learning how to master manifesting and really setting my intention for the day. And I accidentally, <laughs> this morning in my inbox, I like to read my horoscope, so I get like a good sense of like, oh, this might be how I'm feeling, so I can work with that. I don't know if that's part of The Secret or not, James, I'll have to ask you. but. I accidentally forwarded my horoscope to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know where I'm at. It's totally the wrong email. So I get, get here and 
I was like, I am so embarrassed, but at least you know where I'm at today. Is that a way though, you guys, with horoscopes to really kind of use like a GPS to navigate that? I mean, is that it's, part of it at all? You know, it's a great, uh, obviously, I mean, from a Dr. Divinity standpoint, we're definitely one with the universe for sure. And of course we are affected by, you know, the different cycles, but I don't necessarily agree with the interpretation of horoscopes. So I believe that we're actually here to overcome those pr the programming and kind of our, our karmic debt, if you will, and overcome into knowing that anything and everything's possible for us. So I, I wouldn't necessarily read a horoscope and go, oh, that's where I'm at. Like that would be the worst thing I could do is like look at a horoscope and go, oh yeah, there's my destiny for today. Well, that's my day, I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> well, I'd, like I'd like to thank Daily Om though for their guidance because every day I get something that's been very poignant to where I'm at with my you know, spirituality. And today it was all about recognizing my self-worth and what I bring to those relationships. It wasn't a forecast for my day, but really just maybe honoring that within myself on that given yeah. day. I and I'd like that. to thank you for sending it to me, Jess. Yeah. I'll be honest yeah. with you, I really yeah. <laughs> Truly, because I was like, you know what? I want to support her in this. I love this. I love that she's valuing herself and taking care of herself. I'm going to definitely be supportive uh, in that way. So thank well, you. Well, thank you. And we want to celebrate and honor those 12 uh, young men that were rescued in Thailand. What an incredible effort that's been made over the past couple of days. And we're so excited to honor Honor that and Ooh, did you see the video? Oh my god. Oh wow. Oh incredible. yeah. Incredible. incredible. I can't believe. I, love I can't believe like it. That. Amazing, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, you know there's a movie, you know there's a book. It's already in the making. Yeah. Can't wait for that one. Absolutely. That scuba gear on, the tether, oh. it's a whole thing. Anyway, check yeah. it out. So back to the secret. Um today, Transformation Tuesday, we did want to discuss the pros and cons of the secret oh. because I'll never forget when um, the movie came out. I think it was like 2005, 2006. It says different things on Google, so Google figure it out. But um, so I had been meditating for years, and I remember um, when The Secret came out. I think the biggest thing that The Secret brought was the conversation around vision boards. That was really what happened. And what's interesting is watching um, how it came out. I mean, it came out and distributed across the globe. It was a phenomenon, and obviously James and all the other people on there. I mean, it was overnight. I mean, it was incredible. They all were on Oprah. There was this, I mean, it just was everywhere. Everyone was in the conversation. And a lot of people were for it and a lot of people were against it. And I think that hindsight's more 2020, right? So we look back on it and we go, what are the pros and cons of the law of attraction? And obviously, number one, I think, was that it impacted millions upon millions of people to just open to themselves to the conversation. Yeah. But some of the downsides were that experts, even, you know, even as a Dr. Divinity or other people that were really for it now look back and realize that it really was not a correct display of the of the law of attraction well it's too simplistic well it was really about like just sit there and visualize something and it was not they didn't realize that also you can you know your limiting beliefs are going to project down to you know hard things in your life as well they just were saying oh you can just visualize but they weren't talking about actually releasing the limiting beliefs and deprogramming i'll never forget my first experience with the secret it was a girlfriend of mine who told me that in order to you know have the secret we were going to manifest front row parking there you go. <laughs> right? the parking. Place. parking places and i swear to god it worked we got the best place <laughs> in the house and i was like we figured it out this is the secret but it was really interesting because we were really just you know trying to manifest and visualize like like material things yeah. and it was like but that was what the conversation was you know you could you could yeah. get front row that parking. was another one of the cons was that basically that we have these vision boards and I was one of those people too I put up all the pictures I had jets and Land Rover and all and guess what all those came true but the thing is this is that it, we're spiritual beings. We desire love, connection, and expression. We don't necessarily desire to have a bunch of material things. I mean, I do. So, okay, <laughs> I, 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 do you want Aaron's stuff, Jess? Yes, yeah. I want Aaron's stuff, <laughs> and I'd like the love and connection. So, I mean, I yeah. don't think it's just you know for love or money. I'd like love and money. It yeah, looks yeah. Well, a, lot of, a lot of people manifested <laughs> the stuff, and then they were still unfulfilled. So, oh. or they tried to manifest, and they couldn't figure out why they couldn't manifest. Yeah. So there were some major, major pitfalls, and the law of attraction is one of like say. 44 universal laws so it's all cool this law of attraction but it's only one aspect of, of a huge huge conversation very very advanced and I think the point is this is that to be able to truly just sit there and meditate and have things come into your life you have to have a very very advanced consciousness yes that's true however for most people it won't work that way and for most people they'll end up just like projecting their vision of from an ego standpoint from material self instead of really allowing the vision come from their higher self 
to manifest what they truly desire. And well, and I think before you even get into the, the higher self, it's really recognizing where your mindset's at and what you're projecting, right? So a lot of times in conversations I've noticed in, in friends and family that they're projecting the negative. I hope this negative thing doesn't happen, right? I hope this doesn't cost you too much money. Why don't you just hope that I have more than enough to afford whatever I need that may come my way, right? So it's really interesting, without, ref without having a knowledge of where your mindset's at, you might manifest the wrong things. Right. You're speaking negative mm -hmm. things into existence. So before you even figure out what your higher self is, maybe figure out what your mindset is so you can really shift that. Brings up such a good point. Um, there's a story about Buddha and they would ask Buddha, you know, Buddha, do you believe in God? And, you know, because there was a, a notion for a long time that Buddha was atheist, so to speak, right? And um, they talked, you know, and people would say, do you believe in God? And also, why don't you teach people to pray if you do believe in God? And Buddha essentially said in response, I don't teach people to pray or to manifest or any of those things because I know that if you do it eventually in enough time, whatever you want will come true. And he said, and so you don't, but you don't know what to pray for. You're going to pray for a lot of things that you think will make you happy, but just won't. Mm -hmm. And so it's a good point, Jez and um, Aaron. I just love what you're saying there. That's why for me, I want to simplify all of that by just focusing on being as happy as I can right now and letting go of all that stuff. It's mm -hmm. just, it's just complicates something that can be very simple. Um, and that's yeah. why I focus yeah. on happiness. But you're tapped in, tuned in, turned on to your higher self. So I feel like you're already deep in the flow, Rob. <laughs> I feel like we all are already did deep in the flow. Did you see how I used all Rob? Yeah. Right there. Did. All Rob I'm so, so sorry. Right back at you. I know. I'm contagious. I rubbed off a little. I'm sorry, Jess. Yes. Yes. a lot. But what's fascinating is um, I was actually asking my, my son's girlfriend if she had ever seen The Secret, she's like, no. And I went, oh, there's like a whole new generation of kids that have not, like The Secret was huge, huge. right? And so I'm thinking, oh, it's time to redo it into a more advanced, you know, documentary. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, oh, I think there's a little calling there. You Let's know, figure this one out. But I'll debate that with you, Aaron, too. And maybe it's not something that's more advanced, but something that's more accessible and more relatable to a younger generation yeah. and, and facing the, you know, some of the social conversations that we're actually having right For now. For sure. Yeah. Shout For out sure. to um, Kelly Gores, because I think Heal really is sort of based in softly. It's true. On Absolutely. Those principles, Very so. true. It's a For great sure. catalyst for continuing the conversation. For sure. Yeah. I'm so excited to talk more with James and just, um, I'm just honored knowing that um, all conversations around this work open up the ability for all of us to debate it and to say what we like, what works for us and what doesn't. And I honor all viewpoints for sure. I don't, I don't honor any, <laughs> only my own. I'm always right, I've that's got, not true. I've got my pen in hand. I will be taking notes because you know, it, it's so exciting to have both James and Lizzie here, you know, masters in their own rights of their success. That's right, Absolutely. so let's take a little break and we're going to um, have some conversations of transformation from two icons right here. Stay tuned. Thank you for tuning in to This Week in Focus. My name is Victoria Simone, associate producer here at Focus TV Network, America's first live streaming daily talk show network, but you already knew that. And today I have my favorite girl, Jez Moyet, co-host and producer of Good Morning La Land, America's first live streaming daily talk show. Yes, so last week on the Focus TV Network, we had the Renwood Show featuring Malcolm Hatchet. Yes, we had on hashtag Harry and Kelly, Tara Erickson, and that girl is on fire. Fire. <laughs> Hilarious. We had the Alyssa Goodman Show with Dana James. Ooh. And we had Good Morning La La Land, Miss Jessa Moye, who was on that show. On Good Morning La La Land, we were featuring Shannon Kay. She is an incredible little songstress and recording artist. Amazing. We love her. She's got a great new hit single. But Ward, the gentle giant himself. He is the <laughs> OG Robin from Batman and Robin, the Adam West Virgin. And now, he has created this incredible dog food company. So cool. We also had Roger Neal, the second. He's a recording artist. He had an incredible show at Huntington Beach, and we had him on our show to tell us all about that it. That boy can really dance. And sing. I was proud to feature on the show Dr. Lakey and Dr. Daniel Ford. Woo! Woo! They have played an incredible part in my personal healing and brought to life so many of the dreams and visions of the people of Beverly Hills at their plastic surgery center. And. Dan Holtz, the co-founder of the Beverly Hills Rejuvenation Center, was here. He was talking stem cells, hormones, and thyroids. Really live your most beautiful life from the inside out. And we also had Brittany Zoniger here with her show, Purpose. Incredible. She had Mike Hill, creator of Acro Yoga with Andrew Seely, and they were doing Acro literally here on the couch. I think, I, I, think I saw you up here yeah, flying. Yeah, I attempted it. <laughs> You were attempted, <laughs> but you did it oh so gracefully. Thank you. Are you gonna try it when he's here next? 
Absolutely yes. not. Yes, we're gonna see some footage of that. Uh, but I will show you my new show called Startup Studios. It's featuring some of LA's hottest entrepreneurs. Awesome. And we had some fun filming here on our 32 other talk shows. Let's take a look. You got this girl. Here we go. Oh my God, you're gonna Yay. make me laugh. That was a good practice one though. That was a practice run, a little slow on the uptake. <laughs> Let's Hi, my name is Jesse Golden, and I am the creator of The Golden Secrets, a completely... No, hang on a second, sorry. <laughs> Can we start over? Yeah. I'm Wendy Broca. I'm Paula Marshall. By the way, this is politics, okay? This is not ticks. I hated it. Let's do it one more time. <laughs> well, that's why I created Just a Thought Meditation Recordings, so that you can meditate in your sleep. Uh, pause it there. Really can you edit it in? Being new in town, it gives me a perspective on, oh Hello. shit, no, that was wrong. No, can we start all over? <laughs> That's too much talking. No, I'm an actress. I mean, you've seen me, hopefully. Yeah, it's like so hard. It's so hard. That was so hard. Once you go chocolate, you don't want to stop it. <laughs> oh, God. I'll stop, I'll stop. Um, Let's do it one more time. Bitching, didn't work. Complaining, didn't work. We're gonna didn't do it work. one more time. Ready and action. Do I just talk again? <laughs> if you are vegan, you get a vegan broth. You chase this guy's fuck, 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 fuck. I can, I'm blah, blah. I wish my boobs looked like yours. <laughs> Where are they? Andy, did I make it fun yet? <laughs> Thank you. It's no longer a golden secret. <laughs> We're done. Thanks so much for tuning into this week in Focus. My name is Victoria Simone, and I'm Jasmine Moyet. Welcome back to Good Morning La La Land. We're so honored to have James Arthur Ray. You may have seen him on The Secret, on Oprah. He's been all over the globe. He's international, New York Times bestselling author, and all the above. How are you? We're so excited to have you here. I'm blessed. I'm, I'm grateful to be here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the show. So it's you also here. are in Enlighten Us on Netflix, a yes. documentary, not a documentary, yes, a documentary, a documentary on your incredible life story. Holy moly, you've been through a lot. Yeah, if you've ever heard of the dark night of the soul, you know, I, I think I'm the dark night of leadership and performance. So mm -hmm. um, it, ha it has been a lot, and it's been very painful and very difficult and also very enlightening and amazing and growth producing. You know, right. one thing I've learned from you, though, is that pain is the catalyst for growth. Oh, right? you what? did your homework. <laughs> 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 and it's been an incredible opportunity. Tell us about that transformation for you. You know, it's, it's made me a lot humbler for sure. It's made me more aware. It's taught me so much about humanity, about myself, about the legal system, about how we operate in the world. I, I mean, I, I really, with all love and, and respect to my friends who, who lost their lives in 2009, 
that broke my heart. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, I spent five deep dive days with him, really ironically and yet not ironically, talking about how to take the difficulties of life and transform those into gifts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And little did I know how much I would get to practice that. Right. So I, I can't think, speaking from my personal experience only, I can't think of a better uh, opportunity for me to practice what I taught and what I've studied and what right. I've, I've used for years than the one I've had. Reflecting on that though, and, and you mentioned having to practice that. How did, obviously that came with a lot of pain. It did, and I didn't do it very well for a while you know I, I was certainly not perfect at it I I went through every single human emotion and you know anyone who tells you they're never angry is not being honest anyone who tells you they're never depressed is not being honest because the full spectrum of emotional experiences are the human experience and so I, I went through anguish I went through pain I went through depression I, I was angry at God literally for mm -hmm. a time and I I remember I was sitting in solitary confinement at one point and I was just really doing pity party mm. really really doing it and I and I was like damn it you know I've given my entire life to try to help people this is the antithesis of anything I would have wanted and this is my reward this is what I get and then and that mm. was a defining moment for me because in that moment you know you mentioned conversation with God you know my higher self God the universe universal mind whatever you want to call it spoke to me and said Oh, so you did good to be rewarded? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's powerful. And I was mm -hmm. like, Phew. Right. Mm -hmm. So just to, for the audience, because not everybody knows your story, a lot of people do, but <clears throat> Enlighten Us is about October 9th, 2009. Yes. You were holding a sweat lodge retreat with something like 100 people? No, 52. 52, sorry, and three people passed away yes. in the process just so because not everybody knows the story so I just want to give it back a backstory in a little bit now I used to think you know that if people you know from law of attraction if they attracted something horrific like that something must be wrong with them right and as you, we advance, you and a mass and majority eight, population mm -hmm, who bought into right? the secret so then you know you start evolving you realize like this is like a classroom this thing called life and you realize that as people advance there's sometimes even you know advanced classrooms and I feel like you're in like one of the most advanced classrooms you could have. Well thank you. I it, it certainly is grad school. Yeah. Um, sure. And and I I firmly I don't believe I know that the great the greatness of the human being is determined by the greatness of the task. You follow that? Mm. You know, the task that you either deal with overcome or the task that you're beaten back by. And and so you know, we grow the most in the crucible of challenge. We don't grow the most when we're smelling the sweet perfume of the roses, even though that's fun to do. Um, we grow the most in the crucible of challenge. And there's even, you know, research by Mihai Cech, Set Me High, and many others that prove we're even most fulfilled uh, in the crucible of challenge when we're going after big things. And so if you are going to become the very best human being you can become, then, then get your game face on. You're gonna have to become stronger and you become stronger by pushing in heavier weight. Well, that's why you're a self-titled Dark Knight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I just love, love what you had to say there because it's so true that straight roads don't make skillful drivers, right? Great metaphor. And um, the work that, that Mike Cheek sent me, that you spoke to, is such a great reference, right? Because it's all about the ability to get in this psychological state of flow. But in order to get in that place, the challenge has to be just beyond your level of skill. But that's when we're sort of most deeply and fully fulfilled. Yeah. It's profound that you would it's, say it in that way. You know, it's, I, I believe that God wants your goal and vision to be bigger than you feel prepared to go after. Because that way, God has to be a part of them. You know, it, you have to be, it, one of my teachers, I've had many, many great teachers, and one of them was a, a shaman out of Peru, uh, Don Jose Luis. And I said to him once, how do you know when the path is the right path? And he said, Santiago, which he called me, which is St. <laughs> James in the Spanish. Santiago, he said, when you don't feel prepared to take it. Mm. Because when you feel prepared to take it, you don't have to be open, in his words, to the becoming. When you, when you feel prepared to take it, don't feel prepared to take it, then you have to be open to something bigger working through you. Mm -hmm. So how do you then become prepared, right? Because I, I don't want to go down this road. 
I wouldn't. Totally I wouldn't. I don't want you. You know, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. I would not. And then again, I believe that, that life always gives you what you're prepared to deal with. And and you, how do you get prepared incrementally? Mm -hmm. It's the small practices every day. You know, I told you how I start my day, and that's just the start. You know, my day is very, very. Um, habituated. It's very much put in, and this is what I teach the clients that I coach, how to put things into automaticity so that they just happen. And then you have a lot more bandwidth and a lot more ability to be creative and innovative. But that's right. an interesting balance though, the harmony meets bold action and affirmation. Mm -hmm. well, how do you balance that dichotomy? Well, I'm, thank you for choosing harmony. You know, my, my last well. book was harmony. <laughs> um, and I, I, I tried to debunk the whole idea of balance. And, and I said, let's have harmony. Harmony is dynamic. And so, and balance is this. This isn't life. Static. Mm -hmm. that, you know, har this is life. And so when you can have harmony in the midst of the storm, then that's what, you know, I, I recently started taking Tai Chi again and my mm -hmm. teacher says, that's Kung Fu. Mm -hmm. That's Kung Fu, you know, Kung Fu is, is not the movements, it's, it's this, mm -hmm. you know, and, and he's right. When you can be there, easier said than done, and I, I totally screw it up. <laughs> so, you know, most so, of the time, so but I'm working right? it, and I'm getting better. Right? Welcome so, to life, so right? Yeah, right? now, uh, after, I mean, you've gone through an incredible journey of, of that dance of where is it that you can be a full leader, but not have that God factor or Messiah factor, like that God complex. Where, how has that changed since it's, all this went down? It's a daily, sometimes hourly remembering mm -hmm. and practice. Because let's face it, there's a tremendous amount of hubris that comes from, and I've been really blessed, you know, uh, you mentioned some of the shows I've been on and, and I've had offers and all these kinds of things and I've, I've worked with over a million people from 145 different countries and, and when you have that many people coming to you to say, hey, how do I have a better life, it's, it's, it's really easy to start thinking you're kind of the bomb, mm -hmm. right? And the moment you think you're the bomb, then you're no longer in Kung Fu, right? You're, <laughs> you, and universe tends to bomb you and say, all right, you're the bomb, <laughs> you know, deal with this. And so in retrospect, I see my intention, my heart was always good, always. And yet I see my delivery and my practice sometimes was a bit full of myself. Mm -hmm. And I, I really got to a point after wrestling for 20 years, you know, it took me 20 years to become an overnight success. You know, <laughs> I love everyone that, said, right? oh, all these, these people, right? this, this guy James Arthur Ray in The Secret, he just came out of nowhere. Okay, you know, <laughs> you haven't seen him playing, playing credit card shuffle and, and all these things for, for almost two decades. And so I, I, at some level, thought, okay, I've done all this work and I've gone through all this struggle and all this difficulty and I've kind of gotten here. Hmm. So I'm here now, you know. Well, you ne never get here. <laughs> You know, here it's just the next place for the chapter the, to begin, right? Yeah, you reach beginning. one peak and you see the, right. the higher peak. So I have a see. coaching question for myself. I want to ask you. So one thing that I look at with you and I go, holy cow, how can he be so driven? I mean, you're so driven to because I mean, I you know, it, it took a lot to do some of the seminars and conferences, and this is no small feat, regardless of the secret. And to do that amount of business. You have to have some serious drive and desire. And I feel like I, I mean, relative speaking, someone may look at me and go, oh, you have some drive and desire, but I think not even like this much as you, can you teach that to somebody? Can you teach desire and drive? Well, desire from the Latin means from the higher self, mm -hmm. which is really cool, or from the heavens. So beautiful. That's how it's translated. And, and so can you teach desire and drive? Um, yes and no, and and let me just say, you know, all my former colleagues in the secret and elsewhere used to constantly tell me you work too hard, and I'm I was like a man on a mission, and there's that's a key word. I, I would say no, I don't, you know, because, and, and then before I say that, let me fast forward and say when I came out of prison in 2013, I was homeless. Mm -hmm. I was 55, and I was 20 million dollars in debt. Now, <laughs> you know, 
a reporter said to me, why did you come back and start doing the same thing? And I said, really, really easy answer. Clarity of purpose. Mm. And that, I think, is so missing in today's world. That's why 800,000 people, according to the World Health Organization, are committing suicide every year. Mm. Every 16 minutes in this country, someone commits suicide. And for everyone who's successful, 20 attempt and are not successful. I think we have a crisis mm. of meaning. Not so much a crisis of economy, a crisis of environment, a crisis of terror. All those things exist and they're important. More importantly, we have a crisis of meaning. And so in my coaching practice, long answer to your question, my primary drive is to help you find with absolute clarity what your purpose is. And when you find what your purpose is in this lifetime, you don't quit and you are driven. Now, do you work 100-hour weeks like I do? Maybe not. Not everyone is, you know, is Elon Musk, mm -hmm. right? See, he's kind of my hero. <laughs> he's the real Iron Man. Um, but, but nonetheless, you are driven, however you define that. And challenges are defined as temporary setbacks versus failures. So, I mean, hopefully that yeah. helps. Were you yeah. always this Sorry. driven, though? Did you always have this clarity of purpose? No. When no. Did you Consultant. And so I have this business background, thank, thankful to AT&T, that a lot of people in my industry, and that's why I deal with leadership. Uh, so that I did that, and I was in sales at AT&T, and I was successful with that. And then I thought I wanted to be a musician, and I thought I wanted to be an actor, and, and all these. I, I knew, my spirit knew, that, that I needed to be in front of people somehow. Mm. But, I knew, but my spirit wanted me to have the ability to have influence. And so, in retrospect, all these things fit together. Oh, purpose, right? Amazing. <laughs> so, so let's talk about manifesting. Let's talk about the law of attraction because a lot of misrepresentation of what truth is. How much time we got? <laughs> right. All the time in the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, time has us. We don't have time. But nonetheless, law of attraction is real and it's scientific because if you go down to the, then I could talk about that for days. That's called the law of polarity. Uh, you and I are going to find a positive without a negative or a negative without a positive. But nonetheless, they're attracted. Always. Always, always. And so the law of attraction is real. Now, I believe, I'm very grateful for The Secret because after two decades, it catapulted me into Oprah and, and a much larger arena where I could potentially start to educate at a deeper, broader understanding. Because if you sit around visualizing in your living room all day long, they'll come take your furniture away right and, and so consequently there's a lot of ways we attract and we have to understand that 60 percent of the word attraction is action attract action hmm. right so if you won't act on it you don't believe it mm -hmm. and if you don't believe it then you got some work to do because what psychology tells us so that unconscious is like a minimized program down at the, the bottom of your computer screen. You're not aware of it. You think it's gone. But the minute something in life clicks on it, boom, here it comes. And it's, it's taking up space and it's taking up RAM and all those things that I know absolutely nothing about. <laughs> but, but nonetheless, you attract more unconsciously than you do consciously. And so the greatest work that I do is what I call emotional stress hacking. I have an entire methodology and an entire set of tools that I call emotional stress hacking, which, which are not easy ways necessarily, but they're more quick ways to make the unconscious conscious. Mm -hmm. Because recognition is the first law of learning. And when you can- and That is one of the things, you know, um, uh, a girlfriend of mine was watching the documentary with me when, when we were watching uh, Enlighten Us. And there's a point where you're in front of the crowd and you're kind of being almost a little harsh to some of the people, which is very common in transformational workshops. I said, well, there's a reason why they do that. It's to pull up those reactions so that you can see what is holding you back in life. So explain that a little bit, how you're, when you're teaching, when you're doing transformation, how you want to actually pull those triggers out for people. Yeah. Well, there's a, there's a term in psychology called systematic desensitization. And, and so that's one way. If you, if you find somebody who has a hot button, if Which you we really all have hot we, buttons. Including me. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right. Uh -huh. and, and don't push it on air, please. I'm human, guys. I'm human. All right. Uh, but, but nonetheless, if you're really wanting to help them, 
you push it and you push it yeah. and you push it and you push it, push it, push it, push it, push it until finally it's kind of it's systematically desensitized. It's like whatever. Right? And when you get to whatever, now it doesn't have the emotional charge. Now that's one way. Um, but recognition, again, I'll read, right? And, and so, <laughs> have you looked in the mirror? You know? Yeah. And, and so that's called projection, mm. you know, which you've heard of, a la Carl Jung, I'm sure. And, and so, in the work, the real work, I tell my coaching clients my job as a good coach, or even in a, in a live event, is not to make you feel better. It's to make you be better. Mm -hmm. Because here's what I know. When you become better, you're automatically going to feel better. Mm -hmm. And so I need your permission to make you feel worse temporarily or to make you uncomfortable temporarily. And I need you to commit to stepping up to this. And if you can't, that's okay. But really, it truly is. Maybe you're not ready yet. Uh, but if you are, then let's play and let's get through it because the only way to get beyond is to go through it. Mm -hmm. Well, and that recognition will lead to redemption. It does. Your new book. Nice segue. Right? Yeah, she's really good at you're that. You're good. <laughs> Thank you. I think your purpose has something to do with that, you know? Uh, but <laughs> I, that means a lot to me. Thank you very much. Right on purpose. Thank you for recognizing that yeah. in me, James Arthur yeah. Wright. So tell me about redemption. Um, yeah, the new book is called The Business of Redemption. Then the title is The Price of Leadership. Mm. And let's go back to 2009 for a moment. And let me tell you, it was my event. It was my team. It was my choice to do a dangerous activity, a sweat lodge. I'm responsible. And as a leader, that's the price that you have to pay for leadership. If you're not willing to pay that price and step up to that, then you better stand down. Mm -hmm. Because when something goes wrong, everybody wants to be an entrepreneur in this age of an entrepreneur. Oh, it's so romantic. Well, yeah. maybe, you know, okay. Elon Musk said it's like chewing on broken glass and staring into <laughs> the abyss of death. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah. Um, but, but nonetheless, it is beautiful. It's tough and it's beautiful. And there's a tremendous amount of responsibility because when something goes sideways, there's only one person in the crosshairs and that's, oh. that's the founder, the CEO period and you got to step up to that and so I stepped up to that you don't throw your team under the bus you don't you don't you know put place blame you take it on as, as difficult as it might be and then redemption is is defined as the, the true definition is defined as to gain or regain by paying the price hmm. and so there's always a price a prize I believe our country is in need of redemption. Right. Let's make Amen. America great again, okay? And with all due respect, I love America and I love the world. Why, how about we make the world great? Mm -hmm. And Amen. by the way, who's gonna pay the price? Because, you know, I can't look to tax cuts. I can't look to, to increase in minimum wage. I can't look to give me a job. I can't look to government or any outside source. I have to look to me. And I have to ask myself, what's price I'm willing to pay for the prize that I'm going after. That's redemption. And at some point in life, we all need redemption because we sell out for money. We sell out for a paycheck. We sell out our dreams. We sell out on, our, on ourselves. And so this book is all about, it's, it's in the business, it's going to be in the business category because it's about leadership. But leadership as I define it, which is truly needed, is leadership of life first and then business second, because the two, mm. there's That's not just life and business, they're all, they're all intertwined. So how Beautiful. do we redeem our ourselves? By paying the price, mm -hmm. by, by really defining, first and foremost, what purpose is, why that, that's important to me. And by the way, purpose is always about contribution. It's not about getting, it's about yeah, giving. giving. Amen. Mm -hmm. It always about, is about what am I going to do that will contribute to the benefit of mankind and maybe leave a legacy if I'm really, really masterful at it. Maybe leave a legacy after I'm gone. So find that purpose and then understand that, you know, and here's, a, here's another one. Every, every, I shouldn't say everyone, a lot of people in business and in spirituality and in personal performance say, find your passion, follow your passion, find your passion. What we forget to remember is that passion is a Latin word meaning suffering. Yeah. So what everyone's telling you is find your suffering, find your suffering, find your suffering, follow Chew your that suffering. Glass. <laughs> yeah, check <a> glass. <laughs> Good callback. Um, so you will suffer for your mastery. Now you don't have to suffer, but you will. 
You know, pain is not a signal to suffer. Pain is a signal to grow. Suffering comes from resisting the pain, trying to escape the pain, trying to deny the pain. And so, you know, suffering has a certain salvation in it because it peels away the layers of BS and gets you to the core of what's really important to you. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's, I mean, in, in the simplest terms, which I tend to not <laughs> um, that's that's the the shortest answer purpose and then define the price the reason and the why and define the price James, that I to pay. you mentioned earlier creating your legacy what do you want your legacy to be I want the light to believe and have people remember that I impacted influenced guided and directed the infinite potential and the destiny of the entire human race Mm. That's big. I believe that is yours. Thank you. I mean, that's big, I know. Yeah. But if you're going to go, go. Yeah. Big. But <laughs> it's, it, it is such an honor to witness your journey, and especially in the events of 2009. I think it is even more inspiring, quite frankly. And I know that uh, there's only eternal life and I honor the three that passed away. Good and job. I also believe that all of our birthright is redemption and anything, everything forward is all possible. And so I do invite the entire world to open up that space for all of us to know that we can redeem ourselves as a country, as individuals and heal all together. So thank mm -hmm. you so much for everything that you do. Thank you for having mm -hmm. me. I really Your heart mm -hmm. honestly has been pure gold. Through, and there's never been a moment when it hasn't been pure gold. Thank and you. I felt that so deeply. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. just so deeply. So yeah. thank you so much. Well, you much. guys are doing great work okay. and it's yeah. much needed. Thank you. So we want to give thank a little you. shout out for your mental mastery, the psychology and strategy of superhuman performance. You don't want to miss this one. October 27th and 28th in Las Vegas. Tell them just a little bit about that. What we're going to learn, you know, um, Max Planck, who's the father of modern quantum physics, mm -hmm. says mind is the matrix of all matter. Yep. Now, matter has turned into mystery because matter is no longer this solid stuff that we think it is. According to science, not, not spiritual gurus or personal development gurus, Max Planck says mind is the matrix of all matter. So in Mental Mastery and Power, what we're going to dive deeply into is the dimensions, the five dimensions of your mind, which includes the higher self, the conscious mind, the unconscious mind, even the body, they all work in tandem. And how to use those most, most powerfully to create what you desire and deserve. Because most people, I don't care how successful you are today, you're barely scratching the surface of what your capabilities are. Mm -hmm. For sure, Love that. absolutely. Well, so excited and um, just, uh, we're gonna bring you back at the very end. So stay tuned, you guys, we'll be right back. <laughs> we are so excited. You're bringing back the heat. Season four, hit the floor, coming out next week, July 10th. Yes. Wow. 10 o'clock, y'all, be eating. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm so excited. So real. Real. Yeah. Hey, I mean, we filmed the show. I saw the premiere last night. We saw the first episode, so it's real. <laughs> wow. It's happening. The LA Devil Girls are back. Yeah, they're back. They're back in full force. Yeah. I don't know how I'm still dancing this hard. And uh, Tiana Taylor is joining our cast. Um, you know, but it's kind you, of showcasing the the culture of it, right? The oh, yeah, money, for sure. The, the, money, uh, the sex, behind, the fame, the, the, okay. yeah, the, the uh -huh. scandal and the uh, jaw-dropping dances because there's amazing dance in every single episode. Michael Wayne is a choreographer and he kills it every time. He, he's trying to kill me. I mean. <laughs> Today on the 4th of July, also want to celebrate Ms. Leanne Tessa. She's an incredible incredible talent. She's part of the club Mickey Mouse. We got to celebrate with her at the recent release of her hit single, Run In. Rob and I were on the red carpet in the most recent issue of Focus Magazine. Take a little peek right here. And she sang the national anthem at Dodgers Stadium. She killed Hi, it. Sorry. Killed she killed it. it. She sure Let's did. take a look. Or the land of the free. Los Angeles, welcome back to Good Morning Lawland. We are so excited because 
Lizzie is in the house. We were talking Hi. all things TV, <laughs> Sound Kitten, Mommyhood. Oh. My God, right? girl, you make it You've look good. You've been busy, and we look like we're matching. We did we not are. coordinate this. One night. Yes. It's a white party this morning. <laughs> You're clashing with us. Yeah, I was not invited. It's okay. white and black. It's right? white and black. Right? Yeah. Invited. Okay, you've been really busy. I mean, this list goes on and on and on of all the shows, all the everything. I'm like, what in the world are you up to, girl? Serious. Uh, well, let me just say, you know, I resonate so much with that. Uh, the stuff that James was talking about, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and finding that balance and and your passion and and everything that you're doing, and you know, I was a very habitual person and I, a perfectionist at that. And what I found is that I'm all the things that I'm doing on a daily basis, like with with the company and with mom, and then when I was filming the show, I got to a point where I just felt like it was just like a um, too much happened. <laughs> You know, like, yeah. in, like, you know, just getting like overheated on everything. Mm -hmm. um, and so what happened in the past year, it's actually been a very transformational year for me. The past two years have been mm -hmm. because, um, you know, I kind of had to pull on the brakes a little bit because I'm watching my little boys grow up, but I'm missing so much mm -hmm. because I wanted to, you know, have so much control of my company. And it's, it is very challenging to be an entrepreneur because you're in charge of everything. And when it's great, it's great. And when it's bad, it's it's you, it's you know. Mm -hmm. And I want to be at the manufacturing house, overseeing the manufacturing. I want to sit with you know. I work with the pattern makers. I do all the designs. You know, working with the sales reps, talking to the stores. I mean, you know, it's it's just an overload at times. And then you know, being a mom. And my role model was my mother, who was 100% a mom. So you know, I never saw like a working mom around me. So I didn't. I don't really know how that was juggled. I saw my father was a very successful man. And, um, you know, but he was, you know, the father and he went off to work and he worked and he had his businesses. My mom was at home with the kids. And so I fight that inside of me of being, I should be home with the kids. Mm. I should be a mom. I should be here all the time. And then I'm like, when I stop, and it's, oh, it's not enough. Mm -hmm. Like I have a very entrepreneurial spirit inside of me. And I want, I, I want to go, I want to create things, I want to build things. You know, want, you it's know? such an important conversation because so many women are dealing with that yes. right now because, mm -hmm. you know, past generations were able to just be moms. Now mm -hmm. we're excited to be the mom, the wife, the career woman, all of the above. And it's, for some of us, it's incredibly hard to balance. Right. Right? And you don't feel like if you pull the brakes, you're going to still move forward. It's a lot of pressure. Right. A lot we, of pressure. We call it divine discontentment. And there's something, like, there's a beauty in the discontentment because mm -hmm. it's saying, like, we need to rise up as women. How do we find that balance between being creative and having that, that, that desire yeah. that we want to create something and give it to the world, and yet right. that desire to be the best you know, mom or whatever that is for us? Right. And so how, wh what advice would you give to people? Well, I think that I need some emotional hijacking. <laughs> <laughs> Just you know, rub off on it. rubs off on you. You know, so many of the things that have happened in the past couple years, I've had to roll with the punches, and I've had to realize you can't take life that seriously. Like you, like when you, I have two little boys. I mean, there's, you know, we've got a lot of cuts and bruises. And there's, a and there's a lot of punches. There's a lot of punches. Breaking stuff. A lot of things don't go as planned, and you know, I've had to relinquish that control and and give it up to the universe. And I, you know, I had, I think there's major big power in prayer, and I talk to God every day, and He is, you know, my guiding light on every level, and you know, He tells me it's okay. It's okay to just breathe. And I think most of his moms, we just need to breathe a little bit. Like, we got this. You know, we're, we're all doing the best that we can. And, you know, even if we want more, it's, it's good to want more. It's mm -hmm. good to want more, but it's okay to mess up. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, oh, that, you know, I have lived in this prison of, like, uh, people pleasing and, and so much fear in my life of, of messing up and doing the wrong thing. Oh, that's not going to be you know, looked at well. And the past two years of my life have been great transformation for me. And it's been, it's been painful. Like I've gone through like a lot of ups and downs and it's just been, I know it's good for me because I'm growing so much as a woman and as a mother and as a person. So, you know. You know, so many people loved you on Real Housewives of Orange County. And I'm wondering, what did you learn about yourself in the process? Watching it back and watching oh. your life. What was your takeaway? Well, I learned that I need thicker skin. <laughs> but since then, uh, you know, they cast me. I was 33 when they cast me. And I, it, you know, I got a phone call from the director, not the director, the creator of the show. And then, you know, before I know it, these cameras are in my home. And so 
it wasn't something I planned out or thought about being on, which, but I, you know, I, I think it's great. I have great gratitude for the show, and I have, you know, a lot of friends from the show and great experiences. But I did learn that I needed to thicken my skin, and mm -hmm. I don't need to worry so much about pleasing everybody else. And you know, you gotta, you know, you gotta look out for yourself. Yeah, you know. Absolutely. When are you happiest? Um, when I'm with my kids, because it's just not about me. It's about them, and they just have like a total innocence of the world. You know, I'm also like frazzled when I'm with them and stressed out a lot of the times, but I'm happy with them because it's just, you know, there's their innocence to the world is just so, it's so pure, so mm -hmm. special, you know? It's funny, funny you say that when I was um, sort of a young adult, I remember being full of so much stress and anxiety. I would actually, intend, I didn't know why, mm -hmm. I would intentionally turn the cartoons on and let them play in the back mm -hmm. because it would remind me of what it was like to be a child to be innocent and to not take mm. anything too seriously. It was right. very playful. You know? mm -hmm. What have you lo learned from life from your kids in addition to sort of taking things a little less seriously? Um, I don't know, you know, they, little eyes are watching. Little eyes are mm -hmm. watching. And so I've learned that, you know, and as a mom and as a woman in general, it's kind of difficult sometimes to control our emotions. Mm -hmm. And when little eyes are watching, you know, how, should they see mommy cry? You know, should they see us when we're at our worst? Maybe, maybe not. I'm, you know, I, I'm still trying to, 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 to understand that, engage that, because I definitely want to raise young men who are in tune with right. their emotions, because I think that's a big epidemic for mm -hmm. men for sure. in the world. Okay, from a psychology perspective, absolutely you want them to see you at your worst when you're crying, mm -hmm. when you're upset. You want, to, you want them to see the entire spectrum of human emotion, mm -hmm. and you, you want them also to see that you're able to work yourself back up that emotional right. scale. Mm -hmm. Right. right? My so son, I love that you yeah, do that. The comeback. Really totally. My yeah. son's 22, yeah. and, um, and I did not have the consciousness I have now. You know, And right. so he's seen me kind of go through it all, but also become a woman that I've always wanted to be. And I do think that the time in history, like how do we as moms learn, because how do we do that? How do we do the dance of entrepreneurship and that? And you're, you know, sometimes we flail around, but at the mm -hmm. same time, you're having success and you're, and you're questioning yourself and it's so beautiful to witness. Right. And I don't think you're, we're supposed to be perfect. Right. We're supposed to flail around, but I think it's important to have those conversations so they don't think it's just a, you know, this perfect thing that they right. never really learn about till they grow up. So I think it's great what you're doing. I think it's Thank beautiful. You. I think you should really, Thank you. really Thank celebrate you. yourself. And, and you Thank make you it look much. so good, yeah. little sun kitten. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> little sun kitten. Yeah, yeah, so tell us a little bit about your swimsuit line. All right, so sun kitten I designed when I was pregnant with my first son, Preston, uh -huh. in San Diego. Um, and it was something that I'd always wanted to do. Um, I went to school for fashion design and my dad had said, you have to get a college degree before you can move out to LA to be an actress. My dad said the same right? thing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, I, I really wanted to be an actress. I grew up dancing and I loved the stage, but you know, it's a very tough business and I, you know, I wanted to be a mom too. So um, I went, ended up going back to design and I was you know, sitting there pregnant going, what can I do? I'm in San Diego, it's not LA anymore. Um, so I started sketching and then before I knew it, I had entire, collection and I modeled my first line because I wanted to lose all the baby weight and get there. Um, so you know from there it just and then I had another baby so then Sun Kitten although I, it kept running it kind of went on the back burner while I had my kids and then I I was cast on um, The Real Housewives and then they you know they were really intrigued by Sun Kitten Swimwear so really had a, a revive you know so we, we, we like revived the Sun Kitten and brought it back to all its glory and it's done great things. I mean, I remember sitting on the couch during the Super Bowl, and I'm like, oh my God, that's my bikini! I'm trying to have a bikini off the Carl's Jr. commercial! Oh, that was just so such an awesome moment. And then, you know, doing the Miss USA uh, 2015 and seeing all the contestants compete in Sun Kit, and I designed them each uh, for, for, the, for the show. And that was amazing feat for me because I competed in Miss USA years ago. Uh, so, you know, doing that was just a wonderful accomplishment just personally for me. And um, and the company has really grown. And you know, this past year, like I said, it's just I felt really overwhelmed with everything that was going on. So I kind of put it like over to the side a little bit and said, I'm gonna focus a little bit more on family and raising my kids because so much is happening and I'm missing these milestones. My, my children, I'm missing so many things and because you get 
being a businesswoman. You get caught up and you're in this it goes rat race. And, fast. and you're like, what happened? You're six? <laughs> like, what? And my oldest just turned eight. I'm like, how'd that happen? He I was know. three on the show. And I, yeah. So, where can people find your line? Well, right now, everything um, on the website, sunkittenswimwear.com, is 50% off because Whoa. we are revamping and getting ready for. Um, a new line, which will be next year, not out this summer. Mm -hmm. But um, so you can find us online, and we are also in stores all across the U.S. We have a list of stores on the website and out of the country as well. We're in well, I need a new suit worldwide. for uh, you know every year. Like Enough if you have, suits, have one really good new suit, it's like you're on. So it's all, <laughs> go it's look and motivation. see what you like, and good I'll send it to you. Yeah. Summer for sure, so. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Stay thank tuned. you. We'll be back with more. Good morning, La La Land. A long time, your new single, produced by Pooh Bear, yes. works with the bees. <laughs> yes. I know, this, is, this is massive. Yeah, it is, it is, yeah. I was so amazed because um, I actually wrote a song about Justin Bieber um, in my previous album, and suddenly, you know, Pooh Bear comes along, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I gotta meet Justin. This is like, <laughs> this is fate, this is destiny right here. Um, so yeah, it was an amazing experience working with him. He's, um, he's super talented, he's so humble, he's so down to earth, and it was just a blast working with him. You know, I'm living the best life. I have great parents, I have such good friends, I have a dream, you know, I have um, my music, I have my friends, so I think, I think I'm really happy. Welcome back to Purpose. I am your host, Brittany Zonker. I am flying with Andrew Seeley, the acro yoga instructor. This is insane, guys. I've been like this for like three minutes. Yeah, it's just hanging out. Yeah, I'm just hanging out. It feels like you should do this every day to me. <laughs> you can set up some sessions. This feels amazing. Yeah. You guys, if you want to train with Andrew Seeley, all you have to do is look him up on Instagram. He is absolutely incredible. I have had an amazing time interviewing Mr. Seeley today. He teaches all over the world. He will help your body, mind, and your soul find your purpose. For this episode of Purpose, I'm your host, Brittany Zonker. I'll see you next time. I mean, you have been a host and much more than that for many, many years. Any tips you can give us? You start early in the morning here. So as long as you have somebody who like picks up the speed for you, it's kind of like any relationship, right? Like someone has to have your back. Like if they know, like you're not knowing where the next camera is, the next qu question, you know, as long as you're in tune with each other. But I think your, your show is incredible. Mm -hmm. And I'm so thrilled that I could be a part of it today. But more than that, it is about saying, hey, you know what? We need to impact change. What is the one little way in our own world that we can impact change? And whether it's you guys interviewing certain people, bringing awareness to topics, this is what needs to happen because we've all woken up and we know Absolutely. we know what the future is if we keep going down this path. I know that the calling and the purpose is so much greater than me trying to get my hair right to go to the red carpet and whatever. I, I got to keep up because the purpose is so great. Welcome back to Good Morning La La Land. We have James Arthur Ray, Lizzie Robsek here today with us in the studio. Uh, I have a question for us all, I guess. And my question is, you mentioned something earlier, James, that I thought was just profound. You said, you know, there was a period of time when I was really angry at God. And I think we have all felt that way. I know that I certainly have. And so I guess the question I have for you is, you know, what do you now know or feel about God that you didn't know before? Mm. That's a really great question, and I, and I think it, it dovetails back into the conversation around the secret that we were having the Law of Attraction. You can have the unique ability to create what you choose to create, given that you, you grow up, wake up, and clean up, mm -hmm. and, and those, are, those are the three objectives. And that being said, it will not come to you in the way oh that you goodness. think it's going to so come. True. You know, Law of Attraction says, visualize get it and the way it really works is more like this and so i am very grateful to god uh, universal mind spirit because of the lessons i've learned and the growth i've had i believe it prepares me and i think i'm right on course even though physical appearances may appear otherwise mm -hmm. does that make sense absolutely mm -hmm. love that what about sure. you lizzie yeah, <laughs> just wondering. Yeah, I, was just it's a, I know. Was saying, oh, because so, so much. That I, I mean, I just I love listening to you. It, Thank you. It's just it proves uh, that you're truly listening. Right? Yes, yes. So the question really is just, you know, what do you feel that you know 
about God now that maybe you didn't know 10 years ago? Or, you know, what's your experience of God like okay. now that it wasn't 10 years ago? Right now, I, I, I think that it, it's just easy to talk to him. Like, we have this, you know, in the past, it's a pre preconceived notion that you can, like, you know, it's talking to God is it's one way or the other. You know, I go to Saddleback and Pastor Rick Warren, who really talks a lot about the power of prayer and how we can talk to God at all times, anytime, at the end of the day, in your room, in your car, when you're with your kids, in your head. And I've just really, you know, grown a much stronger relationship with God because of the ability that I have to just speak to Him. And, and, I, and I see when He answers and when He doesn't answer and when He waits on answers. And I have, you know, a, a better gauge of that. And I feel, you know, freer just to be able to speak your, you mm. know, to him and be able to open up my heart and my mind. Mm. Mm. Just love that. You know, I, I've really found that in my calls to God, it usually came at a time where I felt like I was going to fall. And I kept asking mm. God, give me a parachute, because when I crash and burn, boy, it's going to be hard. Soften this fall. And then I heard so clearly, stop asking for a parachute. I gave you wings. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Wow. That's pretty good. Yeah. Right? Twitter that. That. <laughs> that, you that. That is a good one. I love we that. We are Good Morning La, La Land, America's first live streaming daily talk show coming to you Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Your favorite interviews are also now available as a podcast on iTunes. That's right. We're well, waking up the world together, you guys. Please like, share, and comment knowing that we all have different viewpoints of what that God is within and that we honor all viewpoints. So please have compassion. Let's all grow and have a divine day. Big hug. It's going to be a good morning, La La Land.